Hello, everybody. Welcome to Waiter to Win. As we go into the middle of October now, it's scorching, absolutely scorching here in Johannesburg. I can tell you that it must be 30 degrees plus here. So expect a hard and fast track at Turpentine. It would have dried out by now. That much I can tell you. Um, but uh, for um, Daryl, um, I know that you've been for the vaccine. You've had your jabs. Now you're ready to travel overseas and go do your thing. That's, that's on the cards, Clyde. As soon as everything opens up, um, we'll take advantage of that for sure. What a boy. And Darren, uh, Cape Town wise, I know you, you did fairly well last weekend. A couple landed for the show as well. So you've been in good form too. Yes, thank you. Um, Cape Town's best bet did arrive. She's a rainbow. She was backed right in from two to one into even money. And then I did mention on the show for Gravel Sunday, Purple Flame was the one punt for the day. He also shortened from 33 to 10 into two to one and won by about five lengths. So okay. all good last weekend. My pick six did arrive. Uh, you would have just about trebled your money. So it was a profit. So Lovely. Lovely, lovely stuff. Okay. Well, we're going to get straight into the show here now quickly and have a look at what the story is um, as far as the waiter to win um, event is concerned. We'll get into the action. And if I may just show you... Um, the disclaimer you've seen time and time again, we don't need to go into too much detail about that. Just a reminder that we've got this horses in training sale, MGS Bloodstock horses in training sale on this Wednesday, 20th of October, uh, being facilitated by Accelerated Auctioneers. It's a live auction between five and six o'clock. And um, that's the information that you can get hold of. So if you're buying or you're selling or you want to get involved, there's a live auction sale on Wednesday between five and six o'clock this week. Right, Turfentine changes. We'll go to the Turfentine card. You've got both Turfentine and Durbanville on uh, the Saturday meet, and we're having a look at Turfentine today, and I know Darren will focus one or two matters with regard to Cape Town racing, uh, but just the two scratchings at this point in time in race four, number three, and race eight, number two. They're not running on Saturday. So we've got some voluntary comments. Very kind of Devin Heffer to send us, to, uh, send us this information. Um, courtesy of Hollywood uh, Bet and uh, Hollywood Syndicate, I should say. And uh, they've decided um, to share this information with us, which I think is very fair uh, for them to do so, where they just, that's the information. They've got two runners on Saturday at Turpentine and the eighth race, they've got Flying Grace. And the comment on that is that he goes up in a trip to 1800 in the competitive novice handicap. He has a poor draw, but with top jockey Samanga Kamala up, Hopefully he can make up ground in the closing stages and running to the money. Uh, there's a winning comment form as well about to fly in grace if you want to make use of that. And then the trainer's comment in race eight about number five, indelible. Sean Terry says this big, strong cult is doing very well at home and took his last run well. The inside course could work against him uh, with a short straight, but the stable's expecting him to run well and finish in the money. He will improve. He will improve. With experience and then Hollywood City has got a run at Cape Town as well in the fourth race this one sounded quite some bullish on this vengeance forever he was named by Devin says by Anthony Dal Pesh after uh, he rode that magnificent horse in Hong Kong and um, he says yeah that uh, Eric Sands he showed good work in his last gallop and seems to have improved at home since his debut run he tries the mile now and the draw looks like it's the only negative the stable expecting a big run so there's some good information from Hollywood with regards to that. Now, Turf and Team, the going is good. There's a three meter false rail at the 500 meter mark. And um, in the last 24 hours, they've had to irrigate the track. It's been quite scorching hot here with six mils of rain. There's the market. We'll go straight to Darren and start up in the fourth race, where Country Flame Darren looks quite hard to beat uh, for Paul Matchapel. Yes, um, she does look very hard to beat in this lineup. Um, reason why is because the field is very weak, a moderate bunch. And uh, I've, I've tried to find dangers to her. The only horse I could find that could probably match her is Maria's World, who ran fifth on debut over the 1450 meter trip. And a horse that ran three lengths ahead of her, Golden Aspen, actually came out to win a good race. So the form line's standing up, but Country Flam on her best form. Uh, she's placed in a juvenile plate be behind Look Yourself. And her last start, three lengths second behind Clafuti, could be good enough to win a race of this nature. I've gone the five and the nine in the pick six just to be safe, as the nine could be progressive. Okay, so two runners for Darren. Daryl, how do you see it? Also a two horse race? Clyde, I've opted to include uh, number two, Burmese Tiara, into the pick six. Just uh, like Darren touched on, this is a very shallow 
made on plates and uh, often a little bit of luck in running can can determine the win of that or the the outcome of the event and there's no doubt Burmese Tiara is going to be fit she's got pace and that suits her and and that will suit her running style on the inside track so she's going to be up front and uh, the other two are going to go have to go fetch her uh, but in saying that she's very very moderate I watched the replay of Maria's world I wasn't too impressed she seemed outpaced uh, she was staying on in the latter stages but if it wasn't for the strength of this field, I would have excluded her completely because I wasn't impressed with that debut. But like Darren touched on once again, it's a very, very weak maiden. And then Country Flame, her best run to date was last time out when she made her debut for a new yard. Uh, Clefuti came out and won impressively and she did finish a few lengths ahead of the third place runner. Uh, but in saying that she has been costly to follow in the past and she's no great shakes herself. Uh, she, she, she's got a wide road to contend with. So if she gets caught out wide, uh, it's not going to be the easiest of tasks for her. So I've opted to go the top three in the betting just to, to play the safe route. Yeah. Um, I would imagine Country Flame that uh, because Samunga rode her last time that he's got the ride again. Muzi normally rides for Paul Matchett, right? And I see that, that he's, uh, he's taken the ride here for Mike Cox, Marie as well. Um, probably they just kept uh, Samunga on Country Flame because he rode her last time. Um, he rode Maria's world last time too. Yeah. He rode Maria's world yeah, as yeah. well. So, yeah. to read into that, I suppose. Eh? Okay. I don't All think right, so. That's no. cool. Okay, race five, Darren. Um, uh, Daryl, I'll stay with you rather. Uh, Eternity Ring is currently top of the board at three to one. Does appear to be an open race as it would be a Phillies and Mears handicap in normal circumstances. But right now, Baron Boots is having the run of his life. Absolutely, Clyde. And you know what? This Philly, a few months back, she actually showed signs of being a high-class individual. Uh, many were saying that she's going to go through the divisions. And then she sort of ran two fair efforts in her latest two starts. Uh, she certainly wasn't disgraced because last time I was in the grade one to Queenie. And you have to take note that that was a timing period where the stables was really terribly off form. Now they've put it away and the stable is on song. So I'm expecting her to bounce back to her best. Um, and I think there's going to be a fair enough pace on here with Queen's Anne's, Queen Anne's Lace up front. I don't think they're going to be calling and sprinting. Uh, and they're trying to tongue to on her. For, you know, you just have to go back to that run in June where she actually gave uh, Desert Miracle four kilograms and only finished three and a half lengths behind her. If she repeats an effort like that, she should take some beating. Um, then I, I like the look of number eight, Julia Tango. Now... She came to the rep uh, to the track with a with a reputation behind her, and it took her three starts to crack a maiden. Uh, last time out, I think she won with a bit more in hand than what the margin suggests. And there is a line of form of yeah, Clyde, uh, through su Supreme Quest. Now Julia Tango got beat five and a half lengths by Supreme Quest in the Bloodstock Sales Cup, mm -hmm. and Eternity Ring got beat four and a half lengths by Supreme Quest in the Tequini Stakes. Right. So on, on a line through Supreme Quest, there's only a length between them. But you have to take note now that Julia Tango is in receipt of four and a half kilograms from Eternity Ring. And that's a lot of weight. So I'm leaning towards Julia Tango. I think she's going to get the run of a race from a knee draw. Healthy respect for Eternity Ring. And then we have to touch on Juxtapose's pool sister, mm -hmm. Just Fabulous. She got a little bit worked up beyond the pens on debut and she missed the break. Only half a length. But lucky for her, there was nothing on her outside and she managed to slide forward and take up the running because she's got a lovely long stride about her. I just yeah. hope she breaks on terms and she's able to, to go forward and not get cramped uh, because this may be the, the minimum range for her. She's obviously looking in further in, in time to come for, for further. So you don't want to be too far back. Um, so especially on a hard track. So for me, I've only opted for the three old fillies over here. I've gone Julia Tango to beat to Eternity Ring and Just Fabulous back in third. Okay, eight, five, and seven is what you're looking at there, um, Daryl. Darren, and, and uh, from your perspective, I suppose with Julia Tango, Daryl may have a point to you know, watch out for the weights with the, uh, and the claiming as well. Um, how, do you, how do you see it? Well, I see it as a field race, to be honest. Um, I thought Eternity Ring... If I had to have a first choice, Eternity Ring would be. Um, I think she's got some solid form lines behind her name. Um, it's her first run as a three-year-old. 
the Botas stables turn the corner. And if she's 80% right, she could be good enough in a field of this nature. Um, just runs beyond Desert Miracle, Rain in Holland. That could prove a little bit too strong for a field of this nature. Um, if you're playing wider, you've got to go very wide. Juliet Tango, you can't fault her form. In her second start behind Supreme Quest, I think she had big burn just ahead of her. Uh, then she came out to win in a small field, but did nothing wrong. She won. And um, others to consider, uh, me time should show improvement, dropping back to 1,450 meters. Uh, Galaxy Raiders, if you put a line through her last round with blinkers on, her form's faultless, and uh, she's unbeaten on the inside track. So that could be a, a, a nice outsider uh, for the pick sixes. Then just fabulous. I believe she's looking for a little bit further now. She did did it the hard way from start to finish, but she's got a big, lovely stride. I think she'll be looking for a, a mile 1800 in future. And another was to consider even Bella Rosa, who's right down to a 68 rating and jumps from a good draw. I'm taking no chances. I'm going the field in the pick six in race five. Yeah. Um, I see that um, Apprentice Venick is on the source of Mama Pera, but She'll be, is she coming to Joburg for the first time? I'm actually not too sure. Um, I haven't seen her in the high fault before. This yeah, could be her first time. meeting. Mm. And then touching on Mama Quera, she does take the four kilos off her back. And she's got a widest draw, so she'll probably tuck in way off the pace and come with a late run. Mm. Well, Daryl said they're expecting a pace that you, as you two uh, mentioned. But it does appear to be a, quite a bit of a race. Race number six on the card is... Um, Darren Princess Cash top of the boards at 15 to 10 and uh, Massacan at 16 to 10 is the second choice and well if the market's in anything to, to go by they're saying it's a two horse race is that right? It really do, does look a two horse race um, Princess Cash does hold Massacan on the astral plane start she holds her by three lengths but there is a kilo and a half swing in favor of Massacan on that on that run uh, Princess Cash her first run out the maidens behind astral plane was a cracking effort. She fought all the way to the line. And I think she's going to relish the step up in trip. In a very moderate field, I think she could have it her own way, especially with Lyle Hewitton in the saddle, not much pace in the race. So she'll be my first choice over Masakin. And those are the only two I've included into the pick six. Okay. So two horses for you. Uh, Daryl, how do you also two horses for you, race number six on the card? No, Clyde. Uh, Darren touched on a very valid point here. There's there's no pace. Well, the race seems void of pace. And in my opinion, I just see La bouncing, bouncing Princess Cash out, taking up the lead and proving very, very hard to peg back up the straight. Um, I think she's the best bet on the card. I do believe okay. she's going to get it all her own way up front. And like, like Darren said, she's, she's improving with racing. She proved that last time out when she ran second, you know, Handicapped debut. A few lengths behind her was Rock U, who came out to win impressively. And you know, <coughs> she does hold Masakin. I don't think Masakin's going to ch challenge her for the lead in the early stages of the race. I think Gavin's just going to slot him behind her. And Masakin's having a 16th start, whereas Princess Kesh is having a seventh. So in my mind, I, I do believe Princess Kesh has got a little bit more to offer. Um, another one you want to touch on for Trifectors is Duchess Bernadette, but she's her own worst enemy when it comes to the start. She tends to play up and lose ground. And she is held by Marcel Ken, uh, by four lengths on the Under Trois run. Um, but she does possess a sort of, a decent enough turn on of foot for a staying fully and and she could uh, fly up and run into the uh, trifecta position. But I'm, uh, the way I see this race is Princess Kesh going to the front and nothing been able to peg her back. I yeah. think she'll be a start to finish for on, now. On that run to Astral Plain, Daryl, there's only what there's two there's two kilos in it, right? No. One and a half. Yeah. One and a half. Okay. And that what you don't yeah. think that will be enough, eh? No. I I don't think so. You know, Clark, you you have to respect Masakin because the cock stable is absolutely flying. Yeah. But I, but so is the fortune yard. I mean they they're really doing well at the moment. And especially with Lyle up in the irons, she's going to be given every chance. And uh okay. Masakin's going to been have to, having to do her best work late to go and grab her. Yeah. Okay. Lyle Hewitson and Gavin Larina. Let's see how they play this out. As we go to the seventh race now, Daryl, stay with me. Race seven, Southern Song and Opera Glass are 33 to 10 favorites. The seven to two close behind Franklin. So again, 
and a horse like Morby with the apprentice Venica on claiming her three, four kilos at four to one. Any sort of result here? I wouldn't be surprised to see an, a result. I've just opted to go field. I think it is a field race in my opinion. Uh, to touch on the pace, she's a cracker. I think she's most effective when she goes up handy, if not leading. And that didn't happen in her later start. So she may well be better than that, that outing. But you know, she's such a big, strong galloper. She doesn't want to call and sprint because there's others that possess a, a faster turn of foot than what she does. So I think the pace will be be reasonable over this trip. Um, then Southern Song, Clark, just put a line through her last start. I don't know if it was the going that didn't wasn't suitable because prior to that, she was ultra consistent. And there's so much collateral form over here with a kilo and a half a kilo swing either way. I just thought that luck in running will determine the, the outcome over here um, because you got the likes of Opera Glass, who's a kilogram better off for uh, three quarter of length beating with Southern Song. Then uh, Franklin's a half a kilogram worse off with Southern Song. Um, you got Traveling Wilbury who had excuses last time out and she's certainly gonna strip fitter. She's a very talented filly on her day. And then Franklin, the blinkers may well have done the trick last time out because she's one from one with the blinkers. And if she's able to race a little bit handier, it certainly won't be a surprise to see her go back to back. So for me, I've just gone the field uh, and I'm actually looking for the results of here. Okay, sorry, just to revert back to Morby, if, uh, the apprentice not claiming the four. I see, I see the computer from Shane plus four. So she's, she's riding she flat for three and a half. Yeah, that's that's a minimum weight. Got a minimum by the way, okay. And that will apply to anything under 53 and a half. So just make a note of that. Okay, it's interesting. Lyle Yurtson on Southern Song and the Azzy form we saw with them come to form at the Val. And Samanga Kumada on Opera, Opera Glass. Darren, what's your take on it? Well, I thought it was either a field race or banker Franklin. And the more I looked at this race, the more Franklin stood out as one of the better bets on the card for me. Um, I, I'm going, last time out, I actually landed a gamble from 20 to 1 into 3 to 1. Reason being, on, in a penultimate start behind Opera Glass and Southern Song, she got beat six lengths into fourth place. Now, going through the 500 meter mark, she was traveling with a double handful, just about to come through, slice through the field um, and take over the lead. And the pacemaker stopped her dead in her tracks at the 300 meter mark where she was forced to, to pull back right to the back of the field, switch, and then run on for fourth again. Um, had that not happened, she would have finished ahead of Southern Song and Opera Glass. Uh, she's actually, um, on that run, she's two kilos better off with Southern Song and six kilos better off with Opera Glass. And she did frank that form by beating Southern Song in her very next start with the blinkers on. She's now two kilos better off for that win. And uh, the blinkers just uh, gave her more speed last time out. She sat second just off Ideal Jet, and then she pounced at the 400 and managed to get up on the line. I'm hoping that she doesn't, not in need of the run. Um, her last start was on the 1st of August. She's probably been vaccinated and uh, uh, got back to uh, full fitness again. So I'm taking my chances, Banker Franklin, in race seven. Okay, well, that's interesting. You're not, you're not worried about the track at all, right? Eh? It doesn't worry you. Uh, she's had two placings from four starts at the track, but I, I do believe that she's going to relish the 2200 meter trip. Okay. I don't think the track will be a concern. Excellent. Okay, well, let's go to the final leg of the jackpot, Darren, where you got indelible. We read the comments there from Sean Terry about uh, indelible at 16 to 10. Um, Eric Oster's the second choice at 18 to 10, and then four, uh, one flying bull is at four to one um, as the third choice. So Based on the comments, I suppose, you've got to give a horse like Indelible a, a, a huge winning chance. Well, you know what? He came back after a little bit of a break last time out, and he beat Motown Magic. Uh, they pulled lengths clear of the field. Motown Magic came out to win by a good few lengths next time out. That form line looks solid. Uh, he's got a, a very um, a stamina pedigree, being a Pomodoro out of a Galileo mare. So the 1,800-meter trip's going to be right up his alley. Um, but the horse I'm leaning towards is Flying Grace from the Clint Binder stable. Um, he had decent form in Cape Town up to 2,000 meters. He's had two runs in the high fault after a break, um, eye-catching last run. And um, I think that he's going to relish the step-up in trip. 
and he is a four-year-old taking on most his market rivals are three-year-olds so i believe that uh, flying grace is the value in the race over indelible and then a horse like aragosta that um mike de cox stable he's rested since the first of may and he's trying the 1800 meter trip but he's also out of a galileo mare and could be anything so we don't know how good aragosta is but the stable's in hot form you can't ignore him and then for the minor placings flying bull very good last run consistent form should be thereabouts i'm going one three four and five but flying grace i see as the value in the race yeah so there's the comments again about flying grace um they're expecting a decent sort of run and uh, indelible worried about the short spread but uh will improve with the experience that's basically just to summarize that again all right, Darren, thanks for that. Uh, got that information from you. Daryl, uh, how do you see it? I don't think there's two very decent three yards um, in the race, lining up Pavia, Indelible, and Aragosta. But they've both got question marks over their chances come tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. Indelible, like Sean Terry even mentions over there, he's got such a stride on him. We don't know if he'll be suited by the inside track, by the shorter running. But the form has really stood up nicely. And uh, I think uh, Motown Magic is above every sort, so he's going to strip fitter. And then Aragosta, I mean, he put up a, a eye-catching debut and then he followed up with a free on win. His question mark is his racing fitness. He may well be fit at home, but he lacks racing fitness. He's been off 468 days. Uh, he's obviously got a nice season laying ahead of him, and it's a, it's a start for him. But have a look at his form line. Second was Tinder Dry. She's won two since then. The third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth horses have all subsequently won their maidens from that sure. form run. So it's very, very strong form. Um, but because of the question marks, I've opted to add one other, and that's Flying Bull. You know, he's, he's super, super fit. He really hasn't disgraced himself since leaving the maidens, and he's been holding his form well. And, you know, Paul Peter and Warren Kennedy on the inside track at the moment, they, their horses go up handy. And they're very, very fit. So they'll be given every chance. And if if one of the top two happens to to um, fluff their lines, I think a Flying Bull may well be there to pick up the pieces. Yeah. It's interesting. The stables are hot at the moment. So challenging racing. The ninth race on the card is the final leg of the, the big six and City by the Sea Tops, the board here, Daryl, at um, 15 to 10. And again, talking about informed stables, I mean, we saw... Uh, I've seen Paul in good form um, of late. And I personally don't see any reason why City by the Sea can't win again. But, uh, you know, he did pick up an eight-pound penalty last yeah, month. I saw that. He, got yeah. things, he got things his own way up front. And uh, so it's, this race is certainly not given to him on a platter. But, you know, he, he proved last night that he gets the mile. He loves this inside track. I think three from four on this inside track. He's going to go handy once again, and he's going to kick once again, and Eskimo Pie is going to try to go fetch him. I think there's a two and a half uh, kilogram swing around in the weights, and Eskimo Pie is going to strip fitter, so he may well get closer, if not reverse it. Uh, and then I've just added in one other battling to find a result in this in this last leg of the pick six. Theory of flight. Now, since he's tried the tongue tie, he's obviously been very, very consistent. His dam went up to 10 furlongs and now Boren's stepping him up to, up to a mile. And uh, if that suits him, I know his form line of his last start hasn't worked out. So I think the third, fourth and fifth have all missed the board in the next, next outing. But Boren Witter's stable represents uh, respect at the moment. Their horses are extremely well. And if he enjoys the mile, I certainly wouldn't be shocked to see him finish in the, in the top three. So yeah, uh, City by the, by the Sea. Eskimo Pie, theory of flight for me. I'm not looking uh, I'm not looking past the top three. And you, Darren, are you are you looking to go beyond those or is that it? Well, I have played wider, you know. Um, I've I've decided to bank a Franklin uh, at a decent price. So I didn't want to go out the last leg. So I've actually gone to play safe in the last. But City by the Sea has really impressed me lately. Uh, he's improving from strength to strength. He loves the inside track. Even though his rating's gone up from an 81 to an 89, the way he won last time, he could well follow up from a good draw. So I would be favouring City, City by the Sea over a horse like Theory of Flight. Um, like Daryl touched on, he's out of an arch mare that stayed uh, 10 furlongs. 
So on his form and the Boita stable, he's got to go into the shortlist as a massive runner. Uh, then another horse to touch on, Led of Breeden. Um, he did well as a juvenile behind Rain in Holland and two lengths off in the Premier's Champion Stakes behind Good Traveller. And then you could say he was a little bit disappointing behind Al Matana. Um, I'm not too sure if his rating is a little bit too high at the moment. But on those kind of performances, he can't be ignored. And then Eskimo Pie, two and a half kilos better off on his last start. It brings him into the race with a, a fighting chance. Um, another one I've thrown in is Dark Tide. Uh, he's got decent, consistent form on the inside track. He's never far off the action and he's drawn well. So I'm going pretty wide, but City by the Sea and Theory of Flight will be my first two choices. Okay, that's the final leg of the pick six. And uh, our WhatsApp, for those of you who have joined the WhatsApp on 0691643272, thank you for that. For those of you that haven't, well, we've been sending some information to you guys on WhatsApp that's not on the show. So, um, and we will continue to do so and it will continue to grow. So if you haven't sent your name and number to 0691643272, please do so because there's lots of exciting things to come. Darren's play of the day this weekend. Darren, I'll leave it to you to take us through it. Okay, so my pick six is a 960 rand perm. Um, I've chosen to bank a Franklin. Um, in or out, it is an open race, but I just feel if she's fit and well, she'll take some beating uh, under those conditions and weights. Um, my best bets are Shangani in race two. Uh, he's a progressive, top, up-and-coming stayer. He's going to love the step up to 2,600 meters, and I make him a very a good bet at around 16 or 18 to 10. Uh, Franklin is my other best bet on the card at good value, around 7 to 2. And my best bet in Cape Town is Ravensthorpe. Um, he's got a bright future, the source. The way the manner in which he won his maiden a couple of months back, he showed that he's got a lot of class about himself. And his comeback run over 1,000 meters was a touch too sharp, but he did catch the eye late. He's going to enjoy the 1,250-meter chip from a one draw. I make Ravensthorpe good value. Um, my multiple double plays for the day, Shangani into Franklin at 11 to 1. And then my two best bets in both centers, Shangani into Ravensthorpe at around 10 to 1 the stretch. Okay, so some good value to be had on Darren from Darren's corner. Daryl, from your side? Hi, my, my pick six is fairly costly at uh, five, six, seven for four units. I'm bankering Princess Cash. She's a winner on paper, and I'm hoping she, she does get the run of the race up front. And uh, Lau will obviously get his fractions right. Um, so she's my banker. And then my multiple, I, I was... I was <laughs> Impressed with the way Juliet Tango won last night. I think with the weight advantage on her side, she should be in the money. And then Banker, the pick six Banker Princess Cash to win. And then Eskimo Pie on the weight turnaround, I'm expecting him to finish a little bit closer and I think he's a solid place bet. Not that multiple comes to around about seven to one. I think it's worth a few rand on. Okay, again, good value to be had. Well, the professional double of the day from both Darren and Dabble, Darren and Daryl, um, is that uh, Shangani uh, is 16 to 10. That, of course, is Darren's and Princess Cash from Daryl. And you can get six to one that double. So that's quite interesting. It's my, all you need to do, really, to get some good money on the day. And from my side, I'm, I'm staying with the Paul Peter Yard. I think Darren's correct in Shangani. And you would have known the last time that I also went for City by the Sea. And I don't want to change my mind. I'll follow them until they get beaten. It's the, how we learned it in the old days. And that double comes to um, six to one. Yeah, don't forget about that horses in training sale. It's on Wednesday evening between five and six o'clock. And uh, we look forward to participating in that. And remember, it's every Friday night that uh, you can take care and join the Weighted to Win team. Now, I just want to remind you guys, there was a horse at Sean Terry that we live, Hewitson was on the show one, I think a couple of weeks ago. And he kept saying, next time, wait for the rain, wait for the rain. And remember, Vanessa. it never stopped raining, and the horse won the next time out. What was the name of the horse? Vanessa. 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 How can oh, we that... never? Why didn't we take advantage of Vanessa? <laughs> when we knew the inside information it was a meeting from when he told us this. Yeah, you know, he's a, he's a top judge. So, I mean, they sit on the horses every morning. They get to feel. Uh, we just look at the form. So, we don't get that. 
that yeah. aspect of uh, of the actual animal. So yeah. yeah, when a jockey sits up and says, you know what he'll be, or he or she will be better when there's things out the ground, you have to take note. But you know, as punters, sometimes you're stubborn and uh, and yeah. uh, <laughs> you don't I know. listen. I know. Did you follow Darren? Did you get some of Senescence when it won? No, I didn't actually. No, I no, stayed no, away. You too. I didn't. <laughs> it cost me too much in the past. I correct, stayed away. Correct. But he did. I just want to. I just want to touch on Sunday's meeting, the Michaelmas handicap in Gravel. Yes. Um, I like this horse, Sir Michael, from the Canama Stable. Um, I'm surprised he's still a two-time winner from 20 starts, but he is better than that. He's just had excuses in the past, bad luck. Um, on like lines of form with native tongue, there's a 10 kilo swing in the weights. I just feel he comes into the race with a handy galloping weight of 54 and a half kilos, and the 1900 meter trip is going to be right up his alley. So I'm not sure what price he is, around four to one or something, Sir Michael. Okay. Maybe take into some doubles or trebles. Okay, so what is that race? What did you say? The Michaelmas's race? Race seven, the Michaelmas handicap. It's not a strong renewal of the race. It is a listed contest, and it's only an ATOS field. Excellent. All right. Great. Thanks for that, uh, Darren. Nice. We'll, we'll have a look at that on Sunday as well. Maybe even add it to some of the play if we decide to take forward uh, this coming Saturday. Thanks, guys. We'll chat soon. Thank you. Thanks, guys. And, uh, Enjoy your weekend. A, thank you. Hopefully it's a big one for all of us. Thank you. All the best. Cheers.